after you install and complete finish the configuration, okay, we can start use the Azure system. Uh, first, we are going to discuss about how to manage the job uh, in that Yosemite. So I think that you already did this command in your the first exercise lab, Hadoop job uh, dash list. So you can list up the, all the job. Okay. This time there is a number over here. So this one indicates whether this job is completed or the running or terminated or the something like so if you list the all, so it will list the all the job even including completed. So the number indicate the one is running, uh, second two is uh, subsidies, and three is a fail, and four is in preparation, it's just before executing, and but submitted, and five is killed, it's unexpectedly killed. So if you have too many list of the job, too many jobs to see uh, what classify at the time you can use the very simple the Unix command like the grab. This is a pipe. So a pipe uh, the output of the, this one will be input of this, then you can see only the three and fail. So you can specify the special job ID if you know. However, if, even though you specify the job name, but the, such a job name is not uh, displayed in that command because it's only for the web user interface. Okay. I think the, this is another part of the first uh, exercise lab to kill the job. So even though you control C, that doesn't work. Because Control C is a send the interrupt signal on the local machine. However, your job is running on throughout the, your node. So uh, Control C is only from the uh, interrupt from your terminal to kill the job. You need to use the job uh, kill command. Some of you, uh, some of the students already successful to kill the job, but uh, don't worry. But however, in Production system. If you need to kill the job, you can use the this command. Next scheduler. Okay. So when we have the many submitting the job, so for example, this is the naming node. You have the data node one. Here are two, here are three, and so on. And here is the uh, job tracker, and test tracker, test tracker, test tracker, and the fire. We're summing the job, okay? And when you submit the job, the uh, it will. Naming node will let the client know, know uh, where the data are stored. For example, it is the data node 1, data node 2, data node 3, and then test tracker will be in charge of the task. First, the map has the map. Mapper will be running like this. Okay? At this time, this is only one job. What if we have the, this is for job 1, map job 2, map job 3. So there are three jobs, uh, there are three jobs submitted. So however, this node will take care of only one job, for example, so first step. Then they need to deschedule to get the resource of the data node 1. Okay? At that time, we need the job schedule. Okay? So, because if we have the unlimited, unlimited the resource, we don't have to worry about the resource schedule. However, since anyway we have the limited the resource like the number of CPU, suppose that we are using the, the dual core CPU, 
So at the same time, we need two loop process. Two jobs are running. So we need to uh, schedule such a thing. So what is the basic idea of that? First one, first thing, yeah. first hour, which means the priority is the submitted time. So first one will be done, the next one, and next one. This is the simplest way. The problem of this one is, what will be the problem? If the first job is long, huge long. job, takes uh, several days, and job two long and job time. three are just a couple of seconds, they need to wait until First one. So we have to change the algorithms. So we can change the algorithm to be fair. We are not sure whether this is a fair. In terms of the arrival time, it's fair. However, in terms of size of job or sharing resource, it's not fair. So we need to consider the priority to be fair to get the resource for all of the summaries. Why do you use the fighting algorithm? I mean, the one that we can use the bunch of algorithm, but uh, today we will talk about the basic scheduling algorithm. Yeah. 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 But I think it has many algorithms. I do. We can, can, we can use many schedule algorithms. Yes. Even some of the students and the researchers they submit, they propose their yeah. own idea for the scheduling, like the CPU scheduling in operating system. So we will talk about that. Okay. First, this task tracker will be controlled, scheduled by what? Job tracker. Okay? Job tracker is coordinating all task tracker. And task tracker will perform mapper or reduce task. Okay? It's a task. So we will see first. People. First thing, first one. It's a simplest algorithm and work very well. So, for example, job A is submitted first. So, until it's finished, job A is finished and the, the other job will be waiting. But if you have resources, if you have your resources, you don't need to wait. Oh, yes, yeah. that's true. And this is the first thing, first of all, before algorithm. I think you can easily understand. However, Excuse if the uh, job A is running long time, yeah. why don't we give the priority yeah. for the later job? This is the shorter job and more important. We don't want to kill this job. So at that time, you can assign the priority, that is the priority based on first in, first out scheduler. So first, we can give, when you submit, uh, when we submit a job, default is normal priority, which means it will be based on the arrival time, the submitted time. However, in case you, uh, there exists a higher priority than this one, this one will be selected and completed and followed by the other normal priority. Okay? At this time, oh, yes. Uh, if the process processing is not huge, can we not say say something like uh, distribute the processing to two loops? Is that possible? Always the distribution job is based on one. It's a block process. Yeah. Okay. So for example, if a block is in data node one, data node two, data node three, only one task tracker, okay, for each node will be uh, started. Okay. No matter how long it takes. Okay. This is a data locality. So for example, this job is takes uh, seven days. At the time, if you do not have the data in the other node, only three nodes will be uh, the working for this job. Yes. So, if, for example, if we have uh, task A and uh, has uh, four blocks, so can we interrupt it and go to the higher priority? Like C? Yes. 
Okay, so then we continue from the what we said. Yes. So in case the A A is running, there are two options. Okay. okay. If you that is a preemptive. Okay. Whether this one is running, if once the day the job is submitted, they should be completed. It's okay. not preemptive. However, if in the middle of the process of the job, if the higher priority is submitted, this one is the stop, and the higher priority job will be uh, the completed and resume the previous job. That is preemptive. Okay. Like preemptive, preemptive is that optional in Yes, you can specify. To do that, first we are going to define the pool. This is called the pool. This is actually one node. Okay. So each node has their own schedule. Okay. Then each node, so each node has a schedule. First, to schedule task is scheduled by job tracker. Once it's asked to the task tracker, task tracker, in other words, each node has their own scheduler. So this is the fair scheduler. If you you need to decide, you, you can configure whether you are going to use the FIFO scheduler or the fair scheduler. The P4 scheduler is the default, I think, I'm not sure, the, uh, the, I think the P4 scheduler is the default. However, the P4 scheduler has a problem, so if you change the configuration to the fair scheduler, it, you need to define a pool. So what is a pool? Pool has the slot of the resource. What is a slot? Slot is a logical unit of resource. We don't know what exactly one slot has how much resource. It is just nothing but logical resource. So no matter how many CPU, how many the memory, how what types of resource, just is considered as the resource. Okay, then divide by number of slot. For example, you define we have 100 slot, which means your computer resource is divided by 100. So you, have, you can have 100 number? Okay. No. no. It's just a logical, uh, high level, high level resource unit. And it's it doesn't matter. Size. For example, if you have the one, the two CPU, okay, then you can define 100 slot. Which means each slot may have how many? One fifty CPU. Oh, is it a size? size? There's no size. No, I mean slots. Slot is just a logical idea. It's an imaginary okay. unit. Okay. Yes, to allocate CPU to it, right? Each we don't know how much it will be located. It's just imaginary. Oh, okay. really? The computer research. So no matter how many resources you have, yeah. you can define just a number of slots. So if you have the 100 CPU, then if you define one slot in your system, you have only one slot, which means only one task at a time. Yeah. So this slot can be used by a task. So for example, you define 10 slots in your system. Okay? Then, 10 tasks, one for each, can be used. Okay. I'm sorry. 
Okay, so slot is a logical unit, not physical resource. It's an imaginary, the unit of resource. So that you define the pool. Pool is a number of slot. Okay, so for example, the this pool can be defined as a default is defined by user name who submit the job. Okay. So for example, this one Alice. If Alice submit a job or job ID one 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 one, okay. okay, then job tracker assign the job to the test yes. tracker. So there might be test like the method test. Okay, reduce the test and such like that. Then there can be Alice pool will be created. Then we will assign a number of slot. slot. Okay. If you have total ten slot in your system, it cannot exceed ten slot. Okay. Doesn't make sense. No matter how big your system resource, it doesn't matter. Okay. Just logical slot. Okay. That's confusing sometimes. Yes. Where do you configure the logical slot? How do we configure the logical slots? Why? How? How? How we will discuss? Okay. So first, of all, uh, you need to understand what is a slot and what is a pool. Okay. It's not the physical size of a resource. Okay. It's a just logical concept. That means it can be applied any node, any configuration. Who is in charge of to assign the specific the physical resource to each slot? It's a head of system, you don't have to worry about it. Okay? It's defined by the user. Defined by user okay. one. Uh, Only slot and pool. Uh, so okay? The ball is considered like virtual, it's like one machine. You can be any number of, but as a default, the when a user submit a job, the as a default, the one pool will be created one job. by F by following the name of the user. Okay. Or, so you can intentionally create. And that will be an each note. Yeah. And that will be an each note. Each note you need to define. Have... Okay? Separation. Yes. Okay? So this one is one node, A node. Mm -hmm. Data node. Okay? So then define. For example, we define 30 task slot. Okay? 30 test slot, there are two jobs submitted by Alice and Bob. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then, if you do not set up any specific option, to be fair, in this node, half and half. This is fair. In the one node, this is one node. There are two jobs, then 30 tasks will be split into two. Be fair. 15 and 15. Okay? So this Resource slot will be assigned to Alice job, and the other 15 a slot of resource will be assigned to the bot. This is a fair schedule. Okay? So in that hand, if we have, uh, if I, if also, it's going to be each, each user going to take his number of, of tasks. If you do not specify any the slot, like yeah. any pool, automatically create the the pool for yeah. each user okay. by following the name of the user. Okay. However, you can create the explicitly, explicitly create the food. Like the, for example, this is the human food. Then you can create. Then assign your job to this food. Okay. okay. Like when the professor said 15 here, 15 here, that means actually uh, like 50% of the computation will be Oh, yes, inside the head system, system, they will assign the half of the research to the half user. Yes, yeah. another half will be the user. To be fair, yeah. that's the reason it's called the fair space. There's more users, it's going to be split in. in yes, if you, it, you have another okay. user like the Charlie, ten, 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 then ten, 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 ten. it will be changed yeah. to 10, 10, 10. Yeah. In the middle of process, you don't have to stop, just uh, Take out the resource, reduce the resource, then assign. 
At the time, you don't have to specify number of CPU time or the amount of CPU, just a slot. That is the reason we are going to define we define the logical unit of the research. And this theory, Professor, theory is like by default, or this is just an example? You need to specify on oh, the computer. Like Can you remember that there's something fair scheduler dot the XML file? Yeah, yeah. In that XML file, we can specify. So this is the fair scheduler, not done yet. Okay. So default, if you do not specify any configuration, it will automatically create the based on the name, username. Okay. Then each job, also you can create the pool that assign your job to that uh, pool. That's another way. Okay. So, what if there's another user, another job, then it will be equal to different theory. Think about that this is the glass. This is the water. So water level should be same. Okay? So this is the fair scale. Dynamically changing. So This is a fair share of the task slot. So first you need to understand what is the slot and what is the pool. And this is the extra number of slot available across the cluster. And they need to consider the demand. Yeah. Okay. How much do we want to complete the, this one? Okay. And sometimes this job is a heavy job, need more resources. This is not comparing to the Alice and the Bob. However, if you just apply the fair, the yeah. fair schedule 10, 10, 10, which is not fair, <laughs> right? So at that time, you can the, give the, for example, this one is always busy, so why don't we give minimum? Okay? Minimum slot, minimum resource. Okay? That is the minimum share. Okay? So you can consider minimum share. Minimum share is even though there's no activity, takes the minimum slot. Minimum resource always. Okay? So it doesn't have any really, uh, job. Doesn't so who will see the example? Okay. How also, however, the total number of the assigned job cannot exceed the total no, no, amount no. of the slot, yeah, right? That's that makes sense. Yeah. However, always along the pool, there the amount of the slot should be fair. Yeah. So let's take a look at the, another example of this one. I define this production is a special, so they need at least minimum share 20. So total task slot is 30. We have the 30 slot logically. However, even though there's no job was a very the light job, it has at least 20 to first. Takes the 20. Then what is the remainder? The 10. So using 10, we are going to be fair. Which means mm -hmm. Three, five, three, five. four, uh, something like that. No, this one has already 20. Five, five, five. So yes. we can assign 5 and 5 to the other. Okay? Even though their demand is 30, only available is 5. Uh, However, if there is no minimum, so 10, 10, 10, 10. 10, 10. Even though this one is need the 25, only 10 will be assigned. Yes. This one is also, this one is also. However, if demand is 5, then there is no minimum demand is 1, okay? Then minimum share is 20, so 20 is assigned, available 10, so we don't have to assign 5 and 5. So 1, 9, right? Because we need only 1, so no need to assign. Waste, waste, right? And this is there. The test tracker? What? The task tracker has the algorithm, right? Oh, yes, each node. 
test director would be the in charge of the this one. So this is the mean uh, fair share algorithm based on the mean share. Okay. So then. is zero. Yes. They don't need. Even though mean share is 20, no demand. Okay, we don't have to assign the job, right? So waste of resource then don't care that this one then fair between this one and this. So 18 and 15, right? So this is another case. We have the 30 task total and mean share is a 50. Okay? And demand is 100. Mean share is 25. So total, we need at least a 75. Yes. <laughs> so we have to be a third. What? So assign what to this, assign to this. Or well, assign half and half. In case of mean share is exceed the maximum number of slot, we can prorate. We can consider the ratio. Yeah. Between mean share. What is a ratio? Two to two, 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 one. Yeah. So which means so 20, 10, 10. Yeah. What about this? Well, I cannot get. Yeah. Because this mean share is exceed number of available slot. So prorate yeah. for mean share. Okay. Mean share is true also the better. Yeah. Right? Mean share should be mean share means guaranteed. Yeah. As long as there is just available yeah. slot. Otherwise, it can be prorated first. Then next, if there is the remainder, you can assign to the other two. What about this case? The, in this case, fair share exceed the, this one. For example, we have 30 test slots. So mean share, first you can assign mean share 5. There's no other mean share. So we have the 25 of fair. Then next, fair. So what about 5, 25, 10? You can make the 10, 10, 10. Then this mean share is satisfied. So we can assign 10, 10, 10. Then that is the fair share. The next one is, in this case, Bob usually submit the heavy job. Okay? So, so usually heavier than other, two times heavier than other job. So if we apply the mean share, it's complicated anyway. So even though we have assigned the, uh, the mean share, so for us, because of the fair share algorithm, the same. So can we assign always the two times more than others the group? So to address that problem, we can give the weight of the pool. Weight means think about the different glass, wide glass. Okay? So why the glass? The height is the fair, it's always the same. But it's a bigger size, which means it will have the more the resource slot. So this is called the weight. So if you assign the two times of the weight of the bar, bar always get the two times of this. For example, if you have the 40 available tasks, it will be the same time. Okay? Same time, so it will be 20. Okay? It's so a fair high, but it has the two times of the weight. Why? The area. Okay. So this is the width. It's kind of the width of the glasses. For example, here. So when you have the 30 task, also there's a mean share. So mean share always the first. Okay? But five. We have 25 available slot. But it should be fair with all of this. Okay? To do that, we can seven. What about the seven? Seven? Yes. Seven. 
7 and 14. We have two available. Two more. Okay? Two more. Yeah. There might be one more. In this case, assigned to this. The, I'm not sure the exactly the how to assign the remainder. Probably it will be assigned from the order of the uh, order. So from my entire, because the first uh, demand 100 and the other 30, so it's going to get the I'm not sure. I didn't check. The weight doubles. You wait if it's weight. But to, the up to this one, it's a weight double 14. It will get 14 instead of 7. Then we have two remainder. You cannot split two. No. Okay? We need to assign. So even though it has more demand, I'm not sure whether it's based on the demand or based on the order of definition. You need to define the yeah. uh, production. Yeah. Then yeah. this will be automatically created. I'm not sure. But it's not critical. So we will test the uh, player scheduler in the exercise that later. Okay. They can be configured by the uh, XML file. Like the, this one is a player scheduler, like that. How to allocate the, how to define a pool? It can be allocation.xml file. You can define it. This is the example of the a maximum job or the default job or minimum share maximum working and so on. This is a example to create the first in first out pool. It's a for each pool. I'm 
going to uh, skip the monitoring part. It's a monitoring part too much uh, stick on the uh, how their system. Okay? So, but we can go over the quickly the uh, what kind of the monitoring tool are available for Hadoop. This is a very convenient tool to monitor the Hadoop system. For example, there might be a screenshot. Uh, this is uh, important. The, you don't have to the, memorize. memorize them, but uh, you should know uh, what kind of code are available to monitor. So if you know the name node, the IP address, or host name, and the port number, you can actually type in, in your browser and see. Yeah. Sometimes the uh, data node, you can even see browse the data. So it doesn't show entire data, so from the beginning you can see the same. Very useful. So this is a example, so we can test it during the exercise lab later. So this is the monitoring for map reduce stuff, how much completed mapping and the reducing and the, um, so on. This is uh, the third party monitoring um, tool okay, for Hadoop. There are a bunch of them, so I do not use any of this, but uh, if you have a try, why don't you try? Okay. That's it for today. So, good luck for your meta. So we will have the meta news then, uh, before the next exercise lab and 12.30, okay? 12.40, so uh, why don't you come earlier, okay? Then, uh, yeah, 1.60, the same room that you use. Any other question? Okay, thank you and see you uh, Thursday.